Good morning, Mount Olive Church. We want to start off today with a little devotion uh, this morning. I want to remind you of the story of the atheist professor. The atheist professor was walking through the woods one day, and he was just admiring the accident of evolution. He looked over the trees and the flowers. He observed the rivers and the animals. He marveled at the magnificence of evolution. All of a sudden, he heard the rustling in the bushes and out pounced a seven foot grizzly bear. Immediately, the bear began to chase him. He ran to save his life, huffing, puffing and crying all the way. But the bear was catching up on every step. The poor atheist professor, he flipped tripped over and fell. The bear was now hovering over him with his paws up, ready to pounce. That's when the atheist cried out, oh my God, help me. All of a sudden, the light came from heaven. The bear's paw was frozen in time and space. The river stopped flowing. The wind stopped blowing. Everything was perfectly quiet and perfectly still. That's when the voice came out of the heavens through the light and said, sir, do you really believe in me after all these years of denying me? After all these years of believing that this universe is merely a cosmic accident. And after all these years of teaching your students why I do not exist, but now you want me to help you? The man peering straight in the, into the light said, you know, you're right. My track record is bad. And it would be hypocritical of me to call on you now. But maybe we can approach this in a different way. Even though you can't do anything for me, perhaps you could turn the bear into a Christian. If you did that, things would certainly turn out differently for me. The voice from the light said, as you request, and all of a sudden the river began to flow again. The birds began to sing again. The wind began to blow. And then he noticed a bear, which was hovering over him, sat back and put his paws together. And then the bear looked up into the sky and said, oh God, thank you for this food I'm about to receive. You see, things can get scary sometimes, and when things get bad enough, it's amazing the new direction that people will be willing to look. I want to talk to you about today to open up this week's devotion, something that we shared from our sermon, Isaiah 53. And Isaiah 53 is the prophecy of the cross. It is the prop prophecy of the cross. It, is, it, it has amazing detail. And as we looked, it opens up with a question for you and for me. And the question is for who? That's who for us on this Monday morning. That's who for all generations and all people. This is a question that comes from the Bible. There's many questions in the Bible. This one is a very common question. And it's for whosoever, for me and you. Who, it says, have believed, believed to put their faith in, believed to rely upon and trust in with everything in them, their future, their present, even their past. What is it that we trust with everything? What is it that we rely upon? That's what he says. Who hath relied upon, leaned upon, trusted in our report? And that's that's the, the theme of Isaiah 53, the report, the report of the Messiah, Jesus Christ on the cross. Whom hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The question before us is, do we believe the news do we believe the announcement? Do we believe the gospel? Do we believe the scripture? Do we believe the doctrine of the Bible? Do we believe enough to put every part of who we are upon that report? There's two reasons why I believe everybody listening to me should believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Look at what it says. Our report. What's Isaiah saying? He's in a selective group of prophets. Prophets who were inspired by God to write many prophecies. On that list, we've seen that God came to Adam in Genesis 3, and he promised that there would be a child that would be born that would crush the head of the serpent or the devil, a victor, a Messiah. We learn in Genesis 49 that Jacob promised his son Judah that out of his family lineage, the tribe of Judah, would come the Messiah. David in 2 Samuel chapter 7 said that out of the lineage of the throne of David would come the Messiah. He had to meet these criteria 
And Isaiah said he had to be born of a virgin in Judea in Isaiah 7 and chapter 9. And Micah even pinpointed that he would be born in Bethlehem, a little town. And so we find that now Isaiah predicts in 53 this very descriptive pr prediction of what's going to happen on the cross. And I go through that list of predictions and I go through that list of prophets to say there's only one man who has fulfilled each and every prophecy. That's just a small sample. And that one and only man is Jesus Christ. And every one of the points, he fulfills the hundreds of years of prophecies that God has inspired through many prophets. That's why we can believe in him. That's why we can trust him. Believe our report. Number one, we believe the list of evidence that comes from the prophecies and the prophets concerning Christ. If you want to be one who's an unbeliever, what do you do with all that evidence? Is it just coincidence? And then we find the last part of our devotion. Not only do we believe because of the report of the prophets and all the prophecies, but we believe because the arm of the Lord has been revealed. The arm of the Lord, that means the strength, right? The power, the doings, the workings. So not only did Jesus come in the manner that the prophet said he would come, but when he come, his life was surrounded with the power and the works and the actions of only the Son of God, that only the Son of God could do. Is that not what we read? History even accounts? What? That he would speak like never a man would speak. That he would feed 5,000 people, or really over 5,000 people, and they would chase him for days. Man, here was the bread train, right? I mean, they follow him. They're going to get fed every day. He could just feed out, out of just a small basket. When he calmed the storm, the disciples were so afraid because they had never seen such power, and they worshiped him. But more than that, I believe the arm of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the action of the Lord was most evident on that third and appointed day. Jesus Christ came out of that grave. He has risen. He's not dead, but he's alive. And he did what no other man has ever been able to do. And it shows the power that goes with the prophecies that pinpoints Jesus Christ as the only Messiah the only Lord, and the only Savior. That's why today you can trust him with your day. That's why today you can believe that he's going to be there in every step of your way. That's why today, if you've never been saved, you can believe in Jesus Christ. The prophets were correct. The prophecies were fulfilled, and he proved it through his miracles, and most strikingly, through his resurrection from the, from the dead on that third and appointed day. You can trust him today. You can believe in him. Stay tuned the rest of the week, and you'll see what this great and amazing prophecy uh, will say to us as we look at the cross. God bless you today.